Uh, this is question 7 from the June 2010 BY1 paper. Uh, this question is uh, all to do with osmosis and it's to do with osmosis in blood cells uh, which is uh, an animal cell. Okay. Uh, remember you must know about osmosis in animal and plant cells Okay, but this question is purely on uh, animal uh, cells. Okay, uh, so the question's uh, revolving around uh, an experiment where uh, blood, okay, one centimeter cubed of blood actually was added uh, to 10 centimeters cubed of isotonic saline salt solution. Okay, uh, just to remind you, isotonic means that the water potential of the solution and in this case the red blood cells are the same. Okay. Um, so after that then to three separate tubes, one centimetre cubed of blood was added to equal volumes of each of the following. So you have distilled water, okay, ammonium chloride solution, and they tell you that that has a water potential of minus 476 kilopascals. And lastly then glycerol uh, solution uh, with a water potential of minus 896 kilopascals. Just to remind you, water potential values are um, always negative unless you have uh, pure water, which has a water potential of uh, zero uh, kilopascals. Okay. Uh, so those water potential values are actually listed in the table here, okay, in the last column. All right. Uh, so you've got distilled water first, ammonium chloride solution, and then your glycerol solution. Uh, interestingly, in the table, the examiner has quoted the time taken for hemolysis to occur, and he's quoted that in seconds. There's the S. Uh, remember, hemolysis is the term given to the uh, bursting of red blood cells. Okay, um, so obviously you should know that for a red blood cell to burst, it has to actually gain water by osmosis. All right, um, so let's look at part A. Okay, uh, so the first uh, question that's asked uh, is a suggest uh, question. Uh, that's the command word. Remember, there's a separate uh, video tutorial on command words. Um, suggest questions um, really just rely on you uh, being able to state um, a common sense answer really um, uh, to the question. So suggest one problem in performing any investigation using blood. Now it's unlikely uh, that you've been taught about this. Um, so you just have to use a bit of common sense and come up with um, a, a sensible answer uh, to the question. So you're actually using blood, okay. So to me, the most obvious problem um, that you have when you use blood is actually the uh, possibility of uh, infection, okay. Blood um, uh, transports various uh, pathogens, okay. And that means you can actually get uh, an infection from uh, blood, uh, typical you know, good example of something, or a disease that you can catch from infected blood is that of, uh, of HIV, okay, which leads on to uh, AIDS. Okay, uh, the other possible um, answer you could put there is um, the, the blood could clot. Um, I think that's a little bit unlikely, although the examiner will accept that. Uh, you know, if you use an, do an experiment on blood, you actually have an anticoagulant there. Uh, that's something that stops uh, the blood from clotting. Okay, so I just decided to put the answer there as a, a risk of uh, infection. Right, uh, moving on then to uh, part two. Uh, explain why hemolysis of the red blood cells occurred quickest when placed in distilled water. Uh, so let's go to the table and uh, we have distilled water here, first uh, row. And it took 10 seconds for the red blood cells to, to burst uh, or to undergo hemolysis. Uh, why so quick? Um, the ammonium chloride took 50 seconds and the glycerol solution took 720 
seconds. So it's extremely rapid bursting um, in distilled water. Well, we've only got one other column in that table to help us out with this, and it's the water potential values. Okay, so the water potential of distilled water is quoted as being zero. That is the highest water potential uh, that you can get. And um, if you have a high water potential, okay, it means that uh, water will enter the cell uh, quite rapidly by osmosis, of course. Okay, um, so the answer to this question is... Um, is all to do with uh, quoting and explaining about the high water potentials um, of pure water. Okay, uh, you possibly could put a comparison in and say, well, you know, the other uh, molecules uh, have a much uh, lower water potential. You know, their values are minus four seven six and minus eight nine six. Okay. Um, so you could quote that, but whatever you do, you also need to state that uh, water moves down a water potential gradient, okay, from a high water potential to a low water potential, okay, and water moves by osmosis. These are the standard responses you need to put into a question of this type, all right? If you don't mention that water moves by osmosis, if you don't mention... Uh, water moves down a water potential gradient, you are going to lose marks. All right, so that's uh, that's a really important uh, fact to remember there. Uh, so there's my answer. I've said water has the highest water potential value of uh, zero kilopascals. Uh, water will move down a water potential gradient uh, from high water potential to lower water potential, and water will enter the red blood cell uh, by osmosis. Uh, okay, I've just uh, I've just realised uh, that uh, at the start of the my answer I didn't actually put distilled water in. Okay, so I've typed that in now. Uh, obviously, the question is asking about distilled water, so uh, you need to state it's distilled water then has the highest water potential value of zero kilopascals. Then you can say water will move down a water potential gradient from high water potential to lower water potential and water will enter the red blood cell by osmosis. Okay, uh, so the marking points there are about the zero water potential of um, distilled water, and it has the highest water potential. Mark then for water moving down the water potential gradient, and the third mark there for stating about osmosis. Okay then, uh, let's move on to part B. Um, right, this part B then, you're told that a sample of red blood cells were placed in a concentrated solution and you're given a value there of minus 2,000 kilopascals uh, and the solution is uh, of sodium chloride. It's asking you to draw a diagram to show the expected appearance of one of the blood cells after five minutes and explain its appearance. Okay, so, you know... It's a bit a bit awkward here because there's uh, uh, potentially three types of diagrams that you could actually draw here. Okay, now I want to pull up the notes um, that are in the app based on this uh, hemolysis experiment. Okay, so there's my uh, my three diagrams, and I've got red blood cells ba bathing in an isotonic, hypotonic, and hypertonic. Um, solution okay so basically the table of results in this question is all to do with a hypotonic solution the reason why is that the table is quoting that the red blood cells are bursting they are becoming uh, hemolyzed all right so whenever a red blood cell is hemolyzed it must be placed in a hypotonic solution. What that means is the water potential of the surrounding solution is higher than that inside the red blood cell. That's why water will move into the red blood cell by osmosis and cause it to burst. Okay. Um, so let's go back to... Um, the question and let's go 
to the table, all right, we know that a water potential value of minus 896 will still cause hemolysis to occur. All right. Um, so the hemolysis takes 720 seconds to occur. So this is suggesting to me that a water potential of 896 for, for the glycerol solution is taking such a long time to cause hemolysis possibly the water potential of that glycerol is similar to the water potential inside the red blood cell you don't know for sure but it, it's just taking so long for the cell to burst it's suggesting that there's not a great water potential gradient there all right um so i am surmising at the moment that the water potential of the red blood cell and the water potential of the glycerol are similar they're not identical i.e it's not isotonic but it's identical because it takes so long for the red cell uh, to burst okay so if we scroll back down to uh, the question you're now being told that you're placing your red blood cell in a minus 2000 kilopascal um, solution now that suggests to me that the water potential of the solution the sodium chloride solution is going to be hypertonic compared to the inside of the red blood cell now the way I've deduced that may be a little bit complicated maybe a little bit too uh, detailed but there is another way that you can come to a to the same sort of conclusion and that's the use of the word concentrated solution by the examiner all right that is indicating to me that minus 2000 kilopascals is a solution with a higher concentration of dissolved uh, solutes in it i.e. it's hypertonic compared to the inside of the red blood cell remember now hypertonic is a solution that has a lower water potential okay so if I just uh, pull up the notes again from uh, my uh, from the app you can see that with a hypertonic solution the red blood cell shrivels up it shrinks and becomes crinkled okay so that is our best option here based on all the evidence based on the fact the examiner has used concentrated solution minus 2000 kilopascals based as well if you wish on the data in uh, the table okay I am saying now that that red blood cell is placed in a hypertonic solution and it's going to become crinkled water is going to leave that cell by osmosis because the water potential inside the red blood cell is higher than the water potential of the sodium chloride solution it is bathing in okay so uh, we have to draw um, a diagram um, so I've done a quick scribble um, and scanned in my diagram of a crinkled red blood cell as long as you draw a diagram that has a spiky uh, appearance okay um, you should be fine okay so that's something I've drawn out and just to remind you uh, that's how I've represented a crinkled cell in the notes it's a spiky appearance okay right so um, that would be your uh, one mark for the diagram okay just show you that again uh, crinkled appearance okay then you're asked to explain its appearance 
all right so you have uh, a couple of lines uh, underneath the space uh, to actually write down an explanation um, the explanation I have really already stated um, while explaining some aspects of this question but I'll, uh, I'll, I'll restate it basically there's a higher water potential inside the red blood cell so water moves out of the cell by osmosis down a water potential gradient causing the cell to shrink and become crinkled simple I hope so there's my answer then uh, there is a higher water potential inside the red blood cell so water will leave the red blood cell by osmosis down a water potential gradient causing the cell to shrink and become crinkled in appearance all right uh, let's have a quick look at the uh, the mark scheme then uh, for this um, question um, I don't think there's anything unusual in this mark scheme so I've just put it up uh, for you to see the uh, the examiner's uh, comments there okay um, and that's uh, that's it uh, short mark scheme I hope that one helped okay um, and we'll move on to the next question